Hello, everybody. Uh, Welcome to a, another exciting episode of the Auto Otaku Podcast, presented by Driving Line and Nitto Tire. I am here with a old friend of mine, uh, John Sabal. He is a, I guess, what is your official profession besides just talented designer, car artist guy? <laughs> uh automotive artist and comic book artist so an uh, artist. Uh, <laughs> artiste as i like to call it artiste uh -huh. oh man um no i've i've known john like pretty much since i got into this like when i started my blog back in what is that 2007 2008 he was he was like yeah. one of the the og readers like <laughs> way back i mean when the everything was so much different back then no that's how i get all my um knowledge from from your blog and you're one of the few that um were posting some really high quality photos from back in the days because back then like if you really want to look for some good reference photos uh especially in japan it's always like thumbnail size like six yeah, yeah I, I remember yeah back back when i used to look at stuff you'd find some weird like geocities.jp yeah, yeah the pictures would be like that big and then i came across auto otaku website and all the pictures were so nice and clear especially at the scuba uh, racetrack that you were at and and it was just like a gold mine for me i was just like this is amazing and who is this my <laughs> character he does not <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that that's really that's really basically the reason I started is because like you say that there wasn't a whole lot of stuff out there at the time. And it just it, I was kind of when I had Larry Chen on, we were talking about the same thing, kind of just how how, it, you know, the technology wasn't that much different back then, but it just felt totally different because there was no social media, no Instagram, no anything it was like now, like something goes on and you, you know about it. As soon as it happens, there's a, there's a million pictures and videos and live streams of everything. Videos, yeah. everything. How did you get your start in with, with cars and, and or comic books to where they kind of always tied together or did you get into one before the other or how did that come about? Yeah, for me, it was mostly, um, intertwined in a way in my life because, you know, growing up poor, we never really have that much money to afford a car or anything. And. Um, so I would always love, you know, to dream about it and it doesn't stay in my head. So I have to almost always draw it out. So, um, you know, starting from drawing robots and anime and stuff from the Philippines and then moved into cars. And then once I got a little bit older, got a job and I was able to save some money, you know, I, you know, that's when I started to actually be able to afford a car, but I was still, you know, dreaming of like, what can I build our own and how can i make this car unique like personally mine you mm -hmm. know so um it's always been so intertwined that cars and 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 drawing and anything that involves art to me has always been part of you know me growing up and up to now and when did you first start doing it kind of professionally right so i went through all my cars phases and never really got into it at all but um when I finally got the E36, I think that's when I started to, um, you know, really taking seriously of like, how can I modify mm -hmm. this? Because now I was already hired in, you know, I already have my comic book job by mm -hmm. then. So I had some spare money to actually get, get something cool. Yeah. <laughs> all the money. Yeah. Do something different. Right. So nothing just like nothing off the shelf or anything. So where you can actually do something. So that was. Gosh, that was 95 when I got my car. Um, and then soon after that, that's when I started to kind of change up the looks. I went from a normal standard, you know, body kit to like a Hammond body kit mm. to um, coming up with my own, you know, mixing up different tuners, right. like wide body fenders from this company, mixing it up with this company size skirts and then yeah. designing my own front bumper. And, um, what I thought uh, helped a lot back then was instead of just you describing what you want um, and how the, how you want the car to look like to a, to the body shop, um, it'll be cool to just present them a mm. picture, so kind of see proportions and and that really helped. And you know, it translated uh, exactly to how I want the car to look like. And then from then on, my my buddy. So that that's how I did it and goes, can you do my car too? Mm -hmm. So I started doing that. And it it kind of just led up 
you know, like a snowball so, so effect. It's, so it there. started basically as a way of kind of doing your own thing and then more people caught on to it. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, intentional in a way that, oh, this is what I want to do, you know, growing up or when I, you know, um, as a career to where I, I'll design body kits sure. or, you know, all cars or anything. It's just, I just love it. It's just fun for me. I never had a, this master plan going into it. Like, okay. You know, but it was just like yeah. uh, almost like a hobby. Right. Yeah. And career. it's always, it's always cool when you can use like a skill you already have, but to do something yeah. you know, that's related to a hobby. Although obviously, I mean, yeah. drawing comics and stuff is not, is not your typical day job where you get bored of it anyway. So, although I'm sure there, I'm sure there are days when you do, when you do feel burnt out. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Like with anything, I mean, being in a comic book, that's my, another dream job. And now drawing cars and designing kits and stuff, it's another, you know, one of those things where you never expect that you, you know, people are actually pay for, you know. <laughs> for your automotive work, is it, is it mostly just like design, helping people design parts or specific builds? I know you, if you followed any of John's, you know, social media pages, he posts these awesome, you know, renderings and illustrations that he does of cars. A lot of them are kind of like fantasy and some are, some are real. So is basically what that's, is that basically what, you know, most of your work involves is translating that stuff into real, real projects? Yeah, so uh, majority of my automotive projects are like real car builds. Mm -hmm. So what you see sometimes on my social media doesn't reflect the chunk of work that no, I'm putting sure, out, it, or at least right. That, that's more, that's more just like your 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 fun work. But some of them, um, I can't really say. Oh, I did that because it's all under. I NBA, see. Like right, I right. So uh, someone else officially released it, but you, you, you yeah, yeah, you yeah, were the yeah, mind yeah. behind it. I got you. <laughs> But it's, uh, uh, but yeah, so, so when we design, um, you know, a concept, you know, build or whatever for a client, it's typically we have to consider a lot of factors of like, is this something that's actually buildable? Can, can they actually put this bumper into this face without any, you know, um, contact with like the braces and sure. the brackets behind the bumper? structures and all that stuff so there's a lot a little bit more than just make than just making it look cool that, yeah because i think as an artist we can cheat and get away with so many things but then it then but when you actually have to get it built then there's a lot of sure. issues like okay this is not realistic and so we have to kind of find balance to where design something really pretty but also feasible and yeah, I know, I, yeah I know there's a lot of you know car designers you see out there and they post these really cool you know, images of like a fantasy building. It looks cool, but like on the other hand, you know, it's going to be very hard or impossible to actually make something like that real where your, your work right. is always a little more, you know, grounded in reality, which is cool. Yeah, no, it's, it's to me, it's, it's, that's only the, the main reason for that is because that's what the client, you know, requires is that it has to make sure that this was, is got to be buildable. Sure. We can actually produce this body kit. Otherwise it's pointless. For right. Me. Right. Yeah. You're just, you're just imagining stuff. Yeah. yeah. But obviously, depending on the client, if they just want something, you know, fun and doesn't need to be built, then we can do all the cool, you know, fantasy stuff as well. Right on, right on. And then, yeah, I remember one of the cars that I, of yours, that I, I photographed but way back in the day was your Challenger. And that, yeah. that was, geez, when did I shoot that? That was probably, what, eight, nine years ago now, at least, maybe, maybe, maybe yeah, more than that. Maybe more. That was back, yeah, that was back when they still had the, the old cars and coffee in Irvine. I remember that. In Irvine, yeah, that's where we yeah, met. That was up. like the that was like the coolest event. That uh, I I miss that all the time. Me too, yeah. me too. The, um, that that the time that I met up with you, I remember we just um, we had the car wrapped in matte That's black. right. That's right. Because because you, you I won yeah you, you won the car by like design. It was the competition was what to design just a like a paint job for it. Yeah, Dodge was having was promoting. It was two thousand two thousand eight. They were promoting the manual uh, launch of the two thousand nine model, right. and it was um, they had a contest to where, say, you know, design whatever cool graphics you think would look cool, you know, cool on this mm -hmm. car. And um, so I thought design, uh, you know, the, the realistic flames instead of the old hot rod, you know, right, 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 flames. And then. Um, but yeah, I mean, even, you know, put it on the, on the hood, we put it on the side panels of the car, not knowing that at the end, you know, there's like judges, I guess that would pick, you know, which one looks uh -huh. the best and they will actually in real life. I knew that's the whole premise of it, but it was a surprise and shock to me once they actually say, Hey, 
we, we chose your uh-huh. design to be built in real life. And I was kind of shocked <laughs> because I was like, yeah, I want it. Like, oh, crap, I have to buy, you know, drive this thing with a crazy car. Yeah, t- taking it to the grocery store or something. And, and I'm Asian guy. And <laughs> Yeah. Really, you know, what's, what's this little oh, Asian man, guy I, doing in this big muscle car with flames I, I, on it? I feel like, yeah, I like I don't belong in this team. What the heck? It was it was weird, dude. Uh, but then RJ came around and goes, "Hey, uh, we have this new program in McGuire's called Raptivo, where we wrap the mm-hmm. car. You know, and um, it's temporary. You can peel it off, and your original paint is underneath. So it's like the car was very photogenic with the flames and everything." So they had it so wrapped the, in the, matte the, black. the original, they actually painted it? So the original was actually painted wow. on. It wasn't like some graphics or printed graphics. or That was, that was, that was almost before the, before fresh. wraps were really big anyways. Huh? Yeah. So, um, and we didn't want to just completely, you know, sure. paint over and redo Pr- everything. Primer over it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, none of that stuff. But, um, but yeah, so... We got this offer from Maguire saying that, you know, they love to use the car as a demo car and wrap the car in satin black. And I'm like, I'm down for it, man. You know, count me in. And then partnered up with um, SSR wheels and we specced it so that we could run their um, S1 um, or SP1 um, wheels in, in vintage gold mm-hmm. finish. And that was the whole premise of like, man, I want this super retro looking challenger. And uh, yeah, that car was that car was I know, so cool. I, I know that would be like your background too because you kind of know some stuff about that, sure. Stuff. So I'm like, man, what my like? <laughs> yeah, I, I was the inspiration behind it, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, even no, but a lot of that stuff was like you know, with the with RWB running all the uh, you know, the the, the work, yeah, that was kind of like the, uh, their wheels. signature look back then, yeah, satin black with gold wheels, right? So it all came around together that time and. I remember you shot it for Speed Hunters, and it was just cool just to, you know, people even really took interest in that build because I was, it was so new to me. It was so such such a different. You hadn't, yeah, you hadn't really been in that in that scene much. Yet. Yeah, it's cool, but yeah, I mean, even though even though you, I mean, you built that thing so long ago, now it's still. I mean, even today, it will, you know, you, I still see people passing those images around and stuff. So I guess it's kind of that that, that style stood the test of time. And then after that is when you got your. 964 right yeah so that actually led to me getting the the 964 because during the whole entire time that we were um you know building that challenger even through the time that we put the air suspension and i think that's when everybody like took notice like nobody really has done something that kind of looks like this and slammed to the gun so people didn't think it was sure. real but the whole entire time i was thinking man i really would love an rwb because at the time I was so deep into Auto Otaku <laughs> blog that you have. I have, I think, majority of all your photos in my desktop. Oh, really? You, like, you, prob- older you, you probably have more than you probably have more of them than I still do. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's just it's amazing the amount of photos that you took during your time in Japan, and um, so I have all those uh, in a separate folder, and I look at them constantly during that, that time. And I thought, you know, I would love to build an RWB someday. And um, it came down to like me going to SEMA and then seeing a, a like a, I think a, a matte black uh, 964 that BC, uh, mm-hmm. BC Moto uh, brought. And then it had the wide body that it had at the time wasn't as, you know, wasn't done properly. It was really sure. messed up. Uh, so I thought the first thing I thought was like, man, that could be a good platform to, or at least a to start with, yeah. car to start with, because, you know, Nakai is going to cut the, the fender right, anyway. And, the, and, so and the, the mechanicals are there. So yeah, as long as the mechanicals are mm. straight and true and running and you don't got an issue with that, you, you know, um, and then the, the following year, 2012 around in the same spot, you know, the car, uh, Carson coffee in mm-hmm. Irvine. We bumped, uh, me and RJ bumped into BC and I said, hey, BC, do you still by any chance have that matte black uh, 964 that you showed in SEMA back in the days? And he said, yeah, we actually uh, went from SEMA to the body shop because the body shop was, you know, who did it kind of messed up. So we're bringing it to a different mm-hmm. body shop. So they're redoing the whole body panels to a smooth fender. 
And then I go, before you guys continue, would you be willing to just sell that? <laughs> BC, BC said, yeah, sure. Okay, let's make a deal. And we made a deal. And then I took delivery. Sight unseen, he sent me a couple of pictures, but I never got to see the car in person until it was being unloaded into my garage. And um, I was in a bit of a shock because I didn't expect <laughs> the condition. I mean, we're talking was, about was, like vendors. It was with a basket case. This thing of like <laughs> bondos, dude. But in a way, that's probably better because one of the things that people always complain about is like, oh, they're they're ruining a nice Porsche. But when your car is starting like that, you probably don't feel nearly as, as but you know, you can kind of do whatever you want with it, right? Yeah, in a way, it's it's not so bad because we're not, you know, cutting up some pristine right, right. model or anything. Yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah that, this one's already... Yeah, the car, that car was never going to be a, you know, super original, you know, time, yeah, time yeah, capsule yeah. anyway, so... Right, right. So, I, I to me, I long, you know, I just thought, like, you know, I, I'm not into it to make, you know, a, as a... You know, just to, to flip it, to make right, right, right. tons of money. I just want to have one in the garage and drive it around, and something that I've looked at for the longest time to actually own one. By the time you did yours, there was you know obviously more of them around, but you kind of went specifically mm -hmm. with a little bit more of like the traditional, you know, old school look. Or I don't know what you would call it, but you know where it yeah. seems like they were kind of each one was getting a little bit more kind of wild looking. But you kind of you, right, you kind right. of like, you, you took was, it back to the roots. That was the trajectory of what I I thought was I was seeing with every single build was like really getting wilder and wilder and different wheel mm -hmm. setups and everything. And I thought, man, what did I like about this build and this cars? And I always go back again to the set of photos that you have in Scuba and in, in, in Japan, and to where it's like that's exactly how I. You know, I, I dreamed of what, what I dreamed of, and that's how I would want my car to look like. So very simple, not, no, no big wing, because I'm not really into the sure. big wing anyways, but I want something more like a ducktail or a Carrera wing. I end up with a Carrera wing. And then the uh, work wheels is a, you know, the, the go-to wheels that Nakai always uses for all his right. cars or most of his cars. So I thought, man, let's let's go with that formula. It's it's a proven formula. And it's something that I'm yeah, familiar and it's, with, and it's never it's never going to look dated. Right, right. And so now when I look at it, it always brings me back to, again to the old Auto Otaku photos that I have in my in my folders and stuff. I'm like, I can't believe I actually have one. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember even when I saw your car at SEMA, I was like, yeah, this this takes me back to the to the original ones I saw in Japan. And yeah. You have the RWB and you still have your E36 that you talked about, right? Yeah, so the E36 is still in the garage. We just <clears throat> finally got it back up and running. Um, it sat in the garage for, gosh, almost 12 years, I think. And, um, you know, the last year we went to was Beamer Fest and then in Santa Barbara and then drove it down, cracked the lip. <laughs> And, uh, getting out of the gas station on the way home it happens and then uh after that it just sat in the garage and then i was like okay i think you know i'm, I'm kind of done with this car stuff so I, I didn't have that much money to really you know Dig back into it yeah. continue to keep up with it and stuff yeah and then and then i won the car the challenger in 2009 and then from then on, i forgot about it <laughs> it was all about the challenger <laughs> took over everything and then i even found myself like grabbing like bulbs out of my e36 to put it in my other car <laughs> it, 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 it became like the, the donor yeah and then after a while uh you know my friends at uh asd suspension said hey we'd love to bring your e36 out you know that let, let us know how we can help so we got together and we, they brought it to a shop to um uh, steve at eas um you know, got the car running again. So now the car is back in my garage. We just need to sort up some electrical stuff and get the it registered. Revival. Yeah. The revival will yeah, happen. Sweet. And it will be televised. <laughs> <Sweet. laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Another thing I want to touch on, I mean, obviously you do, since you do so much, I mean, work in the aftermarket or whether it's for clients or just, you know, designing stuff for fun. Do you have any, have you, is there any like trends or that you've noticed, you know, in the last year or two or you where you might see i know for for so many years it felt like you know everything was wide body wide body this wide body that and I, it feels like that's going away a little bit you probably know better than mm -hmm. i do but do you see is there any direction that you see things going it's it's kind of strange um i see still so many um trends shooting left and right uh in their own uh ways and stuff like the wide bodies i still see 
it being strong, I still get a lot of requests from clients to do a wide body mm-hmm. ones. But the one thing that I've seen at least as consistent are the cleaner builds. Meaning if you, they're going to do a wide body, it'll be a cleaner style wide body. It won't be like a where, on, o- almost more like where you, bolt. where you have to like look kind of hard to even see that it's wide bodies. So. Right. Like the blended fender mm-hmm. flares and even the box flares that are, you know, totally seamless with the body. That's where I'm, you know, I started to see where it's going. And, and then wide bodies versus narrow bodies. Also another thing where I'm getting a lot more uh, requests um, with narrow body builds, meaning no need for wide yeah, fender flares and all that crazy stuff, but cleaner uh-huh. builds, I Something think. That's, yeah, I guess, I guess, that yeah. mean, I guess in a way, probably a lot of the guys are probably getting older that, that, that might have wanted a wide body, you know, six, seven years ago, but now want something a little more subtle. Yeah, wide body is just a, man, it's just a big commitment because it's not just, you're just not considering the cost of doing a full body conversion, mm-hmm. right? But it's, you also have to consider a full suspension upgrade, a wheel Yeah, it's all, yeah, upgrade. it's all, yeah. I remember that actually reminds me, there's a guy that I've seen driving around my town that has a, I don't know if it's a real rocket bunny, but like a rocket bunny looking FRS, but it ha- but for some yeah. reason it has the stock wheels on it. So, oh, so, yeah. and I, I mean, I don't, I don't know if it had, if it had wide wheels on it and he had to sell them or something, but it's like, the, yeah. it's the funniest looking thing. Yeah. It's like, Work in progress yeah, yeah, it's like, it looks like a, like a hovercraft or something. So it gets kind of expensive. So you, you get, you know, uh, you, you see bills that are a lot more cleaner. And I think older cars will always be, at least personally, more appealing to me just because, you know, uh, some of the cars you don't even really get to uh, understand and know what that, what they're all about. But then somebody will come in and actually do something, uh, do a, you know, fix it up in a way that makes it look so attractive and so appealing. Like, what kind of car mm-hmm. is this, you know? So, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. A lot, they always say, like, a lot of the coolest stuff, you know, you can do to a car is where... You can tell something is different, but you can't exactly tell what. Like you, you have to like ask him, right. like, "Wait, did you? Is this? Are those stock? Is that original?" We said, "No, oh, no, we actually did this." Yeah. But like where it's, you can tell it's different, but you can't tell exactly what, you know, what they've done. And I think that's where the divide comes in, right? Because there's a group of guys that are very, you know, um, drawn to the stuff to where it's very subtle, very clean, o- almost OE. M plus, mm-hmm. but not you know further than that because you see some modi- modification is also it's very very subtle and seamless, but then you also have the other side where, you know, the crazier, wider, the biggest right. ring, the gigantic and, wheels, yeah. you know, but they gravitate to that mm-hmm. stuff, which is fine. Also, there's nothing wrong with that because it's just it's not sure. our money, it's yeah. our money. The two disciplines in 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 the approach of like car building and designs. The only other thing I wanted to ask you, we just for each of these episodes, I'm just going to do a thing where we call it the the lightning round or or what have you. So, was your E36 your first car, or did you have something else before that? No, uh, that was my first project car. The my first car that I technically have was uh, a Volkswagen Rabbit. Oh, nice, nice. That's the one I where I paid for with my own <laughs> money. Uh, you know, my dad bought me a Baja uh-huh. Bug. Uh, but it wasn't really mine because he was the one who Tidal, yeah. it, but I worked His on name it. was on the title. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, plus it was stick shift. I didn't know how to drive, so I never drove it. It's t- technic- it, it was uh, yours, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, this is your car, sure, sure. I'll drive it, okay. But uh, it was a Volkswagen Rabbit. I think it was in 1982. It had the metal bumpers before the cabriolet, you know, switch over. And then I got um, a Honda Prelude right nice. after that. And then it was, I was getting into too much trouble <laughs> because oh, Calcine, as you know, and Honda, uh-huh. man, they're like, yeah, right? so, you know, I was, yeah, I was getting too many tickets. So I thought, okay, I got to get out of this scene and got to be a little more sure. mature. I'll buy a BMW. Yeah, yeah. You know? Nobody will pull me over. Style, huh? um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that was, yeah, that, was, that didn't happen. Um, so I got, I got in trouble with Yeah, what, what you... And plus, I'm broke. <laughs> All right, and then uh, so but, uh, I assume you, obviously your as the way you described it, your RWB is probably one of your dream cars. Um, but what about do you have maybe two or three other dream cars that you that you consider? Sure. When I think of dream cars, it's always like two sets of like attainable. Right. Yeah. Dream that, cars that's that's kind of how I am too. Like, yeah. So. Yeah. The, the RWB and the E30 M3. Those are somewhat right. attainable, right? And then um, maybe an NSX even. Then, but, then you go into uh, the other level. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
the unattainable dream cars would be like McLaren F1 GTR, uh, uh, the Porsche GT1, and the BMW E36 GTR, the super rare ones that they don't they didn't really oh, like that. that right, many. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the motorsport right, version. Like the, 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 the exactly, license. yeah. The, would, those yeah. are sweet. Yeah. Solid, solid. This would be interesting. Do you have, is there another project car that you would like to build, whether it's a realistic plan or something you just like, would like to do at some point down the line? I've been eyeing another build actually, which is uh, a 911 backdate RSR. Hmm. So uh, it's basically like a, you know, like a 1972 RS, but with a white right. body. Now, uh, RWB did their own version of that um i think rut's car right there in the back is you know some something close mm -hmm. to that but the rsr that i'm thinking of is more like the factory right, rsr right. um uh version of it and um i don't know something about like those older 911s and how they look is just, it's just amazing it's pure yeah man it's the silhouette of it all and just the way you know the front and the rear you know, fenders are just bulging out of the back and if somebody like offers me cra crazy money for my RWB, I think that would be the next build. Just sure. go with a, a little, a little more old school. Yeah. Super old school and just nicer, you know, as long as, again, as long as the car runs, you know, great. And, but that look, I think is, is somewhere I'm, I'm kind of looking at a lot more. Yeah, I'd like, I, I personally, I'd like to see what you could do with a, with a bug. Like you just mentioned I think an air cooled bug would be, would be cool. That'd be fun because that one has a lot of tie in my, you know, family. Because my dad loves Volkswagen uh, bugs. He had like I don't know how many bugs and beetles he had back in the days. So. Yeah. So he worked on yeah, those. Yeah, I've 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 kicked around the idea of get, picking up an air cooled VW of some sort because they're I can't afford a Porsche, but uh, <laughs> a, a VW I could buy. So that's I think that'd be fun fun yeah. to mess around with. It's never cheap though. Once you get <laughs> that, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you, uh, that, that, yeah. It's something. It's like the. At some point, the the cost of the car itself doesn't even matter because you you you've spent, you've spent the aftermarket support for those for those cars. Like it's endless. yeah, that's one good that's it's the one so... good thing about it. So yeah, some of the yeah. cars I bought, like the older Japanese stuff, it's the car is cool. But like, if you want to do anything, like anything you're going to do is going to be you know custom fabricated. You know and that unless you know how to fabricate, it gets very expensive, very right. Cool, <laughs> and I and I and I, and I, I, and I do not it. know how to fabricate. So. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. No, I think that's a, that's a good place to leave off. Um, obviously they can, you can all your work you can find on your Instagram, uh, Facebook page. It, it's all just at, at John Saval, right? Yep. That's it. Yeah. And I'll see it. Yeah. I'll probably, add, I'll probably go through and add some, uh, some Im images over so we can show what you're talking about with the, with the challenger and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So I want to, yeah. Thank John for coming on and uh, talking to us and thank, thank everyone for listening. Uh, we'll be back again with another episode uh, real soon. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.